Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. So here we are. I've been getting a lot of requests in reference to how to manifest things, how to make things happen, um, whether it's getting that job you've been looking for, whether it's bringing that partner you want, whether it's fixing your relationship, whatever it may be. So it's, this is a very broad um, subject because it dabs into different philosophies. It dabs into a lot of... Uh, science. It also talks about, I mean, it's just a very broad subject. Okay. So I'm going to get to the point really quick. I'm going to try to make it as brief as possible. If you're interested in any more information in regards to this, or you want more videos to be uploaded, uh, of me talking about manifestations, then definitely comment below. Let me know. And I will give you exactly that. So anyways, this is a general general video okay so anyways so when you're trying to manifest first of all if you look at your okay let me let me go from the beginning so a lot of our dogmas a lot of our beliefs a lot of what we think is real has a lot to do with our childhood um experiences so if you let me give you two different scenarios one uh you were raised in a very abundant lifestyle. You were exposed to the greater things in life. Um, and everything just was, you know, fine and dandy, whatever that may be. <laughs> Everyone does experience certain things in their life. Um, but I'm just as a scenario. And then you're on the other side of the spectrum, which is you were raised in a household where either your father, or your mother always had issues with money, uh, there was lack of, uh, there was lack of abundance, there was lack of et cetera, et cetera. So on both spectrums, two things happen when you're a child and you're exposed to that. And that usually manifests and plays out in your adulthood. So that person that always had everything and was very abundant and was, you know, exposed to the greater things in life, two things happen. One, they didn't appreciate the things they had and they become basically um, not self-motivated at all and usually leads to drinking, et cetera, et cetera, overindulgence. Or they realized at a very quick age that mind moves matter. And what that means is quite simple, exactly what it is. The mind moves the material. So if in fact that's what they learned from this experience that they lived, this 3D experience that they lived at in a childhood, as a child, then they're great at business. They have their own businesses or are doing amazingly well. Um, now let's, you know, go into the other side of the spectrum, which is lack of. So two things happen with them. One, they self-condition themselves to believe that money doesn't grow on trees, that they're always going to go about their life experiencing difficulties when it comes to money and always having lack up. Or two, it self-motivated them to want to achieve greatness, to want to do greater things, to promise themselves that they would never starve, they would never go through whatever they went through if they had children, that they would give them a good life. So in these two scenarios, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because, again, a lot of our childhood conditioning triggers what we think in, as adults. So energy is everything, okay? Absolutely everything. And for some of you guys that I'm not sure if most uh, humans have experienced deja vu, where you're in a situation and you're like, I've lived this before, I dreamt this, maybe in a dream or something, and what it is, is basically that we live in a multidimensional universe. Whether you believe in that or not, if you're unaware of that, I highly encourage you to study or get information in reference to that. So, anyways, my point being, we are always guided. We were all born with our intuition. Intuition is something that you can suppress. Uh, and growing, the older you get, the wiser you get whether you decide to sharpen that ability or whether you decide to completely ignore it, then that's, you know, it would definitely show in your lifestyle or the type of life you live. But anyways, my point to this is 
Self-conditioning plays a very important role when you grow up. And the reason for that is because then you create dogmas in your mind, what's right and what's wrong, um, what you think is someone should do or should not do, et cetera, et cetera. And what that does is basically it keeps you in this box where I was taught uh, that I was always going to have lack of money, that I was never going to experience great things because only the few experience that. Or I was taught that I, you know, have the world in my hand, basically. And, and, and that's a true statement because every reality, my reality is not your reality. Your reality is not your neighbor's reality. So the best way of explaining this is if you take, let's say you and I are, you know, out in the street and we both witness um, an accident, a crash or something, two cars crash or something. And we are at the same place, the same time, the same, you know, um, same situation, absolutely same situation. When we come together to correlate and connect our, our what we experience, our, our experiences are very different. Even though we were there at the exact same time, doing the exact same thing, let's just say, and we seen exactly everything that happened. Your reality may not be my reality. I may have processed it in a very different way. So what I'm telling you is that that's just an example of a multidimensional universe. My universe is very different from yours or from what you're experiencing at the present time. So when you're trying to manifest, you have to understand this. And the only way or the reason why I say this, this is massive and very important. The reason why it's so important for you to understand this is because if you realize that or you accept, your mind is open to accepting that we live in a multidimensional universe, what that means is that the here and now that you are living at the present time can be altered by the way you think, by your thought process, by maintaining yourself positive or maintaining yourself negative. So when, you know, I, I deal with this on everyday basis with customers or clients that they're like, you know, I'm struggling with this, this, and this, and this, and that, and you tell me to be positive. How can I be positive if I have this, this, and this, and that? And what they're listing is basically not what they want or what they're trying to achieve, not their goals, not their desires, not none of that what they are in fact giving power to or accepting as their reality is the circumstance in the now right now that they are experiencing so they're focusing on everything that they don't have and that's the that's basically a blockage you're blocking yourself from keeping or maintaining or bringing towards you what you're wanting now if you think you're if you think of yourself as you know um a radio is the, the best way of putting it. You're a radio and universe is the signal that comes through. It doesn't matter if you're thinking negative or if you're thinking positive. Universe doesn't give a shit and doesn't care if you're being negative or if you're being positive. It's going to pick up on what you think about and focus the most. And that's exactly the life experience that will unfold in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. Okay? So let me just give you a better understanding of how this works. When you're in a relationship, okay, and I find this to be very true mostly with women. When you're in a relationship and it's at stale, you're bored, uh, there's no, you know, there's no spontaneity in it. Uh, there's no excitement, I should say. As women, because we're ruled by emotion, we automatically start assuming that other things are happening unbeknownst to us. And that's the reason why they're losing interest. That's the reason why they're not as close as they were. That's the reason why we're not having sex. That's the reason why a million reasons. Okay. So even if your guy or your woman is being true to you and they are literally just exhausted of working or focused and determined and trying to achieve some, whatever it may be, and you're over obsessing over certain scenarios that have not happened yet, but you are like in a frenzy, which every single day you wake up and you wake up terrified at the thought that they're cheating on you. Chances are, if it happens, 80% has to do with you. And the reason why, and I know that's a very hard pill to swallow, 
but it's the truth. A person that fears rejection. If you get yourself in relationships and your fear is that they always walk out on you or they always leave you behind or they leave you for someone else, you're putting, like, you get into that relationship with that innate fear engraved in you already. So whether you are aware of it, meaning whether you accept it as real, in your subconscious mind, it's already there. So again, like I said, you feel that the more closer you want to bring them to you, the closer you basically to the point of suffocation, and then they walk away and they're like, you're like left to say, oh, I knew it. This was going to happen, et cetera, et cetera. It's not that they, they themselves make that happen, but it also has to do with the fact of your thought process, your thought patterns, what you think about the most, you know, mind moves matter. That's what it is. So if instead of, if you're in a troubled relationship, instead of focusing on all the negative and going through this long ass list of all the things they're doing wrong, if you actually put effort, take ownership of your own life and put effort into it. And instead of focusing on the bad, start focusing on the good. Well, I'm not experiencing anything good because he's not giving me attention. He's not this, he's not that. Then what is it that you want? Well, I want him to give me affection. I want him to take me out. I want him to show me how loving he is, etc. Then are you really focusing on that? And the answer to that is usually no. No, it's not. Then how can you make something manifest? How can you bring about change if you're not doing anything different? You can't. There's no way around that. So when it comes to, again, like I said, manifest, manifesting an example, a job, um, I've dealt with different clients that have, you know, they were in a bad streak or whatever, and it was really difficult. And every single time that I would have a conversation with them, it was bombarded with texts and emails about the things they don't have and what they once had and they no longer have. And I told them, look, you need to change your way of thinking. Okay. The thing is that if you're so consumed with what you had in the past, you're accepting the fact that the past was the best thing that ever happened to you. So what are you doing? You're basically self-sabotaging yourself to experience in the present or in the near future better experiences that are going to give you uh, that are going to give you that belief that things could get better. You're keeping that from you by focusing on the past and focusing on what you don't have. Because like I said, the universe doesn't give a rat's ass if you're thinking good or if you're thinking bad. It's going to give you exactly what you think about the most, okay? That's just the way it is. No way around it. So instead of focusing on what you don't have or what the lack that they have or what they're doing in your relationship that is so wrong, if you spent all that time and energy, really spend that time and energy on what you do want and what you want them to change. Oh, I want him to be more loving. I want him to be more understanding. I want him to bring me roses out of the blue, whatever it may be. Then I guarantee you, if you give yourself seven days, seven whole days of every time you catch yourself thinking negative, negative thoughts, if you redirect your thoughts to something positive and start focusing on what you want to change in the relationship and how you're going to feel and tune really tune into that feeling, I guarantee you that within seven days, you're going to see things different. You're going to see things start to unfold in a very dramatic way and in a very almost um, uneasy way because I know that in the beginning when there's shift changes, it's kind of like, oh my God, what's going on? And it throws them off, but it's just that. It's the fact that you're changing the tune or your signal to be able to get to that radio station that you're trying to listen to. So I can't sit here and say, I want to get a job. And then I get an, a call for an interview. And I go into that interview thinking, I'm going to be shut down. They're not going to like me. They're not going to hire me. Um, a million reasons of why, you know, in the past they haven't hired me. You know, in the past I interviewed and they just let me on and they never called me back. And you're taking all these fears and all these fears are just basically... Fear, what it is, is basically doubt. And if there's doubt in anything you do, then it's kind of like that saying, you know, fear is your own, 
it's what keeps you from greatness. And that's honestly the, that's the truth. That's just the way it is. Um, so again, like I said, try the best you can to maintain yourself in that positive frequency type of energy. Um, if you're in a relationship and you've been in a long-term relationship for years and they just don't commit to you, then I guarantee you that if you actually make some, you know, really go into thinking and pondering of the relationship and analyzing, I guarantee you that within that span of time, you have most obsessed over the fact that they have not committed to you. And that's the reason why they're still not committing to you. So if you start focusing on, I want commitment, I want a long-term stable relationship, I want this, I want that, two things are going to happen. That person's going to step up because you're putting that energy and you're vibrating to that energy. Your aura completely is calling for that. And this is what, this is the shift, okay, that we're talking about. When there's a shift change, again, like I said, if that person is not going to get committed to you, is not going to want commitment to, towards you or give you commitment, then that person, like their true nature is going to start to show. And that's just universe moving and conspiring to bring things about what you're wanting. And if that person is not wanting commitment, then the first person to go is going to be that person that's not wanting to commit. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because it makes room for the person that does want commitment or that's going to offer you that type of stability that you're looking for. So again, um, let's see. This is a very uh, all over the place video, but it's kind of giving you an idea uh, when it comes to energies. Energy is everything, like I said. And the moment you're able to, two things you have to do. One, you have to accept that there's a multidimensional universe and the reason why you accept it or what it benefits you in accepting that is that you're open to the possibilities of unfolding events. So that's one way. And two, go back and to really analyze what you think, what are the dogmas you carry within yourself? What is it that you fear the most? What is it that keeps you from growth and advancement? Is it the fact that you fear failure and that's the reason why you're not trying to do something different? And if that's you know, if that is, in fact, the reason, then if you fail, you gain experience from it and you get back up and you try again. So basically, what's the worst that can happen? Absolutely nothing. Uh, you actually did something instead of not doing anything at all. And again, I've always said this in all my readings, even not making a choice or deciding not to make a choice is still a choice. We all have that free will. So when it comes to relationships, um, that's a different type of energy. Like I said, you know, like I mentioned or kind of um, dabbed into when I said, if that person is not wanting commitment, then what's going to happen is you're going to start seeing things unfold to the point where you no longer want that person or that person's going to walk away. And what that is, is free will. So we all as humans have free will. This is our innate birthright. So when it comes to you bringing an exact person to your life, like an example, a past lover or something like that, um, you're dabbing into a free will of someone else. And if they're resisting or if they're not wanting to come back to you, then that resistance is going to be there. But what's going to happen is that universe is going to bring a person that is going to be able to bring to you or make you feel how that person made you feel. Um, I hope that makes sense. So anyways, I'm going to give you guys a quick exercise that you can do. Um, and like I said, I highly encourage you guys to comment if you're interested in more of these videos. I will definitely give you guys that. So I was told, how can you make, not make, well, yeah, make, <laughs> I'll be real, uh, make someone reach out to you or text you or communicate with you if they haven't done that in a while or if there's been some type of distance between you guys. So this is a very quick rundown. So what you're going to do is basically you're going to put both your palms together. And the reason for that is because there is two focal uh, energy points where there's projecting and receiving energy. So the palms is one and the, uh, the plant of the feet is the other. Okay. And that's where you receive or project energy from. So anyways, you're going to rub both your hands together. 
I don't need to rub them, but for you guys that don't really are a little bit unaware of energies, you're gonna rub your you're gonna rub your palms facing together, and you're gonna expand that, and you're gonna pay attention to the energy that you feel within your hands, between your hands. So you're going to keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it further away until you feel a little bit of tension there, kind of like a rubber band, imaginary rubber band. And what that is, is basically um, the resistance of, not resistance, but the uh, weight or width of your energy, if that makes sense. Um, and what you do is you're going to just really tune into that energy, try the best you can to feel that energy. That is your energy. So you're going to start getting a warm sensation in the palm of your hands or even a very hot sensation, depending on how easy it is for you to project energy. So the moment you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to, this is a called the uh, energy ball. For those of you that practice or that dive into anything that has to do with mysticism, um, metaphysical, uh, esoteric, you are already aware. Um, but for those of you who don't know, uh, what you're doing is you're taking out projective energy of yourself to send out to that person. So anyways, you're going to, once you feel the weight, the heaviness of the energy and you feel the energy, then you're going to bring your hands together next to your mouth or close to your mouth and you're going to speak out loud. Let's just say, I'm trying to get Joe Schmo to message me. So I'm going to speak into the ball and say, Joe Schmo, can I borrow your thought pattern? And what you're doing is you're you're being ethical and you're wanting to know if it's okay for you to send a message. Now, some of you guys may experience a very quick no. Like you're going to have this gut feeling like something is off and it's wrong. Don't do it. Don't proceed. Uh, what that means is basically that that person is experiencing or going through a lot of things that are weighing heavy on their mind at the present time. If you hear a yes or you feel at ease, then you can proceed. Okay, so I hope you guys understand that. So anyways, let's just say that I sense that it's a yes. Then I'm going to say, you know, Josh Mo, uh, text Jessica. So you have to be very specific. And the reason for that, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced, like you're going about your day and then all of a sudden you think of a person and you're like, you have this feeling like, oh shit, did I forget to call them? Did I mention to them that I would text them or something like that? And what it is, is two things. Either they've seen this video <laughs> or uh, they've been obsessively thinking about you previous days and maybe that's the reason you perceive that. So again, um, once you do that, you know, and, oh, and like I said, be very specific because if you just say like Joe Schmo, you know, text me, they're going to get that random thought of like, did I forget to text someone? Was I supposed to call someone? Like, oh my God, I can't remember. So basically, you're not sending the message clear, and they're just going to pick it up as something um, general, like text someone, like, I'm going to be feeling throughout the day I need to text or communicate with someone, just not knowing why. So if you say, you know, Josh Mo, uh, text Jessica, then they're immediately going to get the message of reaching out to you. Like, they have you guys ever experienced, like, someone comes to your mind and you automatically assume, because we're negative by nature, you automatically assume like, oh my God, I hadn't thought about them in a while. What if something bad happened? And then you text them. You text them. It usually means that the person uh, was actually thinking of you or obsessing, obsessively thinking of you. And that's the reason why you sense that. So anyways, um, once you say, you know, Josh will text me, whatnot, um, you know, or if it's a partner or something like, you know, Josh Mo, I miss you so much, text Jessica or whatever. Um, and then once you do that, you feel in, again, like I said, tune into your energy. The moment you're able to tune into that energy, then you expand it until you feel the same weight of it. And when you feel that, try to envision all the energy coming out of the palm of your hand and push it out. So you're going to just push that energy out. You're going to, even if you have to close your eyes to visualize this, you're going to push it with all your might and send it out to the universe. And what's going to happen is that they're going to receive that as a thought. So to them, it's going to be like, oh, it's so random. I just thought of Jessica. Like, let me see what she's doing or what she's up to. And then they'll text me or whatever. Um, but again, like I said, try the best you can to be respectful people. Um, you know, don't, don't do, don't overdo it either. And also very, very important. The moment they reach out to you, let's just say, I just get a text right now and it's Josh Mill. Um, it's very important for you to call back your energy. So what you're going to do is you're going to take out your hands and place them or raise your hands on top. 
top of your head or whatever. And you're going to say out loud, spirit guides, I call upon you to assist me to bring back my energy. I call my energy back now. So what you're doing is being very general. If you say um, bring back the energy, then what you're doing is when you send out your energy, you're sending out the energy and what that your energy is doing. It's assisting you into bringing you guys together or bringing that communication together. Uh, but if you call back on the energy, you're going to pick up residue energy from that person. So let's just say that person is extremely depressed lately. Like you don't want that type of shit in your aura. So be very specific in saying, I call upon my energy back. And then the moment you feel at ease or you feel at peace, then that's when you can, you know, it's done. You're already integrated. Your aura is back whole. And um, you can do this, you know, you can test it out yourself. You can, um, like, not tell anyone and then do it uh, just to see if it works or whatever. I know that there's a lot of skeptics. So you're capable of doing that. And, again, like I said, I do highly encourage you guys, the moment you guys do hear back from them, definitely, definitely call back your energy. Okay, guys? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this um video. I was going to say reading. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more of these videos, definitely comment below, like, share, and definitely subscribe to my channel.